In this video, we're going to learn how to write abbreviated electron configurations. Although a complete electron configuration gives you a little bit more information, an abbreviated electron configuration generally gives you all the information you need to know. It's going to show us the outermost electrons, and those are the electrons that tend to be involved in chemical reactions, so they're the ones that matter. So let's start, for instance, with the element fluorine. The trick is to find the noble gas on the line before it, in the period before. Okay, So instead of writing 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, we're going to skip the first row and just put helium in brackets. That means the electron configuration through helium. And then we write whatever's on this line. So 2s2. 2p5. Granted, we haven't saved much time on that one, but you'll see it's going to be pretty helpful with some of the elements further down along the periodic table. The other thing we're going to learn in this video is about valence electrons. The valence electrons are the electrons in the highest occupied energy level. Okay, highest occupied energy level. And again, those are called valence electrons. They're the ones that matter. They're the ones that are involved in all the chemical reactions. So the highest energy level is the second. And there's a total of seven electrons. So fluorine has seven valence electrons. And that's going to be important for things that we do later. So let's try calcium. Again, find the noble gas in the period before. Okay. So for calcium, it's going to be argon, and then we just read the rest of this line, okay, so uh, 4s2. So that was easier than writing 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. This gets us all the way through argon, and then we just write the rest. So how many valence electrons does calcium have? That's the highest energy level, so it has two valence electrons. Okay, again, that's going to be really useful to us in a lot of things we do this year. Let's try antimony. Okay, find the noble gas in the line before. So the electron configuration for antimony is krypton. And then we need to read across this line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, S2. And then we've got the Ds. 4d10, and then we're back to the 5s, 5p123. So that's the abbreviated electron configuration for antimony. Now again, how many valence electrons does it have? Well, this is the highest energy level, the fifth, not the fourth. So it has a total of five valence electrons. Okay. It's not that these electrons aren't important, they're just not valence electrons, so they don't generally take place in chemical reactions. So manganese, why don't you stop the video and see if you can write manganese, the abbreviated configuration, and how many valence electrons it has. So hopefully you did that, and if you didn't, you really should. So argon. And then 4s2, 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, that's the highest energy level, so it has two valence electrons. Xenon, I put that there because when we do xenon, you can't just write xenon, okay? That doesn't work. So you've got to go the noble gas before, krypton, okay? And then 5s2, 4d10, right? And then 5p6, eight valence electrons. Okay, please stop the video and try acetine on your own. Again, I hope you stop the video because if not, all you're doing is watching me work instead of taking a chance to get your own practice in, okay? So astatine is going to be xenon, 
right? And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Six S tube. So don't forget the six, go down to the four Fs and then back up to the five Ds. So it's pretty common to forget the four F14 there. And then five D10 and then six P5. And again, the six energy level is the highest. So this has seven valence electrons. Okay. Little shortcut that you may have noticed. This group has one valence electron. This has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And most transition metals have one or two, and we'll see why later.